Good morning. And welcome. It's good to see you all. This is the peanut gallery over here, so if you want to come to church and goof off, you sit over there. If you're serious and pious, you sit over here. <laughs> Blessings, all. Oh. Peanut gallery is fun. We gather, <clears throat> we gather in, uh, as we are, as we are. And uh, uh, every Sunday we can be reminded of what life is all about. What it is that's truly important. What it is that often consumes our hearts and our minds that isn't so important. Um, so I want to let you know where I am today. Um, this last Friday, one of one of my dearest friends passed away. And I'm in that, I'm in that space where life takes on a different level of clarity. What's, what's important, what's not so important. And I'm living, as all of you I'm sure have experienced too, in that liminal space, that liminal space between here and there, between being here in the body. And passing on to eternal light. It was too soon for all of us. He was ready. He was ready. And he told me. He was ready. So. Rest in peace, Father Jeff. Part of my heart. I'll be well. I will be well. I'm feeling grief. I'm feeling gratitude and deep love. Deep love. So. Let's, uh, let's take a run through this hymn we haven't done for a while. Creative, come to us, creative spirit. Number 687. You sound great today. Beautiful. Good to be together. It is good to be here together. It is good. It is good. 
Please rise if you're able. We begin with Take My Life That I May Be. 685. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God beyond all names. God beyond all names.
God is in you. Oh God in us, speak and inspire. God above us, God below us. God outside, God inside, God everywhere. Eternal light, life of all life. May we seek union with you, eternal love. May we seek even now and every now, may we seek union with you, divine love. May we find in this world and dreams and desires and yes even fears our deepest desire which is union with you divine love and in every union may we see that this is truly our heart's desire to be one with the one. Amen. We're coming to that place in the book of Matthew, which is the end of Jesus' life. And according to Matthew, these are some of his last words, some of his last teachings. And as we have observed in the past couple of Sundays as we've been reading through these final parables, they include warning and invitation. Warning and invitation in the face of the end of things. In the face of the end of things. Both warning and invitation. For it is as if, when he says it here, it, he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one, <clears throat> to one he gave five talents, to another two, and another one. To each according to their ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed me over five talents. See, I have made five more talents. 
His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed me over two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have back what is yours. The master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, would have, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to all who have, more will be given. And they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of God. Very difficult now to read Jesus' words. Because of what tradition has done with his words, it's very difficult to read his words as though he were not talking about heaven and hell. Almost impossible. Throw him out into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, this must be hell. And so whatever exactly the teaching implies about how we are to be, what is at stake is eternal bliss or eternal torment and damnation. It's almost impossible for us not to think that way. But I want to encourage us all to, in this moment, put that away. Put that away. There's no mention of heaven and hell in this parable. Second thing I'd like to clear out of the way. If we, and we tend to, any parable that Jesus tells about a master and slaves or a master and servants, we tend to think God and individuals. So the master is God, and the servants are individuals. There's no implication, necessarily, that that's what is meant by this story, how it's meant to be understood. There are many qualities about this master uh, that Ought not be ascribed to God. Reaping where you did not sow. Harsh. And the scenario itself, although apparently quite understandable from the common context of the time, where apparently, much like our time, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And those who got money, mm -hmm, and they get more money. And those who don't have money. Find themselves one car breakdown, 
health issue away from devastation. Does this parable condone that? That the rich get richer and the poor get poorer and that's just the way it is? So be shrewd with your money. Be on the rich side. Is that? So there are ways, I think, to take this parable in a really unfortunate direction. But recall that he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. And he uses a scenario that people would understand involving money. And if he's talking about the kingdom of heaven, then he's talking about spiritual life. Not meaning something other than material life, but including material life. He's speaking on a level that begs the question, what are we here for? In this time, this space of time, this span of time, sometimes that looks quite long and sometimes seems oh, pretty short to us. And if we take this parable and think not in terms of a harsh judging God and individuals who do more or less well, but rather think about the span of time that we have in the body. And imagine that these three servants are just different parts of ourselves. All gifted. With talent. With life, with energy. With intelligence. With bodies. For a time. Now let's go to that third servant. The one who buried it in the ground. And his reason was because I was afraid. I was afraid. And now let's think about that servant with compassion. Because fear is something that we all know, that we all experience. You see, we're all gifted, all of us. And by that I don't mean, oh, you have gifts and I have gifts and your gifts are different than my gifts or slightly the same or I don't mean that. I mean we're gifted. We are gift. Front to back, top to bottom, we are gift. You are gift. Everything is gift. And so in terms of this parable, these three are gifted.
And in the realm of the spirit, it actually does work like this. That the giftedness that each of us has, the giftedness that each of us has is to be invested. It's to be given. It's to be risked. And the result of doing that is a kind of multiplication that goes beyond the rational. That when we give of ourselves beyond our fear, and we all have fear, beyond our fear, in spite of our fear, there's increase. More and more and more. The reward of love is more love. The, re the reward of investing ourselves in love is the experience of joy. Enter into the joy of your master. So here's a question for all of us. What do you fear to lose? What do I fear to lose? In this gift, this gift that I've been given, and whatever it is I think I have, what do I fear to lose? Such that I cannot give what I have to give. I cannot risk what I have to be risked. I cannot offer what I have to offer because I'm afraid of what I might lose. So what do I do? I bury it. That I might keep it. That I can keep it. But the problem is that what we fear to lose cannot be kept. What we fear to lose, we will most certainly lose, one way or the other. You're not what you have or what you think you have. You're not your body. You are embodied, but you're not your body. That should be patently obvious. Which body? The one you had yesterday? Last year? When you were born? Which body are you? What are you? And the answer to that question helps us understand what we're here for. And we need not fear losing anything. Because what you are cannot be lost and never dies. What we have now, or think we have, we are but stewards of temporarily. To be invested in love so that we might enter into the joy that is the possibility. 
I believe that some of the people who are the richest people in this world have no riches, have no worldly riches. And some of the most worldly rich people in this world are more like that third servant who buried their talent for fear of losing it and have invested everything in comfort, security, and wealth, which will not, cannot be kept. What is life? What is it for? Think about your own death. I'm thinking about mine. Ask yourself, what is it you're afraid to lose? Ask yourself, what are you afraid to lose when you think about your own death? And can you imagine living in such a way now that the thought of your own death actually brings joy? For you will not be lost, even in death. And nothing that you have done in love can be lost, but remains forever. By that grace, we are saved.
Come to us, creative spirit. 687, verses 1, 3, and 4. 687. Please rise for the prayers of the people. <coughs> Gracious one, teach us to be truly alive. Awaken us to the significance of our being and the possibility of heavenly life on earth. God in your mercy. Amen. Help us to see past our fears of losing what we think we have. us to see that our destiny is to be one with the living one. All. God in your mercy. We pray for those struggling in poverty, oppression, under the violence of war. Bless the helpers, and may we be helpers. God, in your mercy. Hear now these concerns that we now name aloud are in our hearts.
into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you, and do this and remember me. And again after supper he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sins. Do this and remember me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is prepared. Everyone is welcome.
body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. May this divine body and blood remind us of our essential oneness in the one life that we share. May God's blessing and grace displayed in this meal go with us from this place into the world. Amen. Announcements. We, uh, it's Thanksgiving week. There is a, Thanksgiving, a vegan Thanksgiving meal. Yeah, you can't imagine it, can you? <laughs> A vegan Thanksgiving meal, some of us can, because we've had it, uh, will be on Wednesday between 11 and 8 o'clock, pre-order for takeaway, Um, pre-order if you're going to show up too, Um, but between 11 and 8 here, uh, Colin and friends will be preparing really a a gourmet vegan Thanksgiving themed meal, so, uh, and it's pay what you can, pay what you can. Um, so have a great Thanksgiving. I wish you all the best. Uh, I don't know that we need any other to announce any other. Oh, yes. Mira, put these on my stand. Celebrate the season Friday, December 8th, 6.45 to 9 p.m. Holiday music, refreshments, uh, a little bit of carol singing. Carol singing. Oh, are you going to sing? <laughs> Aha! And that carol too. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Carol singing. Where? That'll be here. Right here. Right here. December 8th. That's a Friday. Thanks to everybody who helped out with thanks, uh, Cranksgiving uh, yesterday. Cranksgiving, uh, which was a, a successful event, um, and uh, as it is annually. And several, a lot of bikers showed up. Bicyclers, uh, I would say 30 to 40 in all, who collected a whole bunch of food for our food giveaway program, food ministry, uh, and also um, they donated a thousand dollars to us in our ministries. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Just to let you know, uh, Arts on the Fond will be sponsoring. A Quiet Place Winter Solstice Quiet Music in the Night on December the 21st, 2023. That's Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. Call it one of, one of your uh, Advent observances, but it's going to be nice. So, uh, A Quiet Place. We'll have poster, we have posters up around the place. I want to close by saying um, thank you for being Uh, the kind of community that you are, that we are together, um, it is just a tremendous blessing. And it's real. It's real. Um, In so many different ways, all of us sharing our gifts with one another. So thank you so much. Please stay for the annual meeting. I knew that, Janet. Janet, I was all all over it. What made you, what possibly, how could you think I would forget? Because I always do. Annual meeting is right after this. Main item of business is to approve our 2024 budget. Um, we, were, we are efficient in our meetings. It's going to be great. You don't have to go anywhere. Just stay where you are. And, uh, and we'll, we'll start immediately after this hymn. Please rise if you are able to sing.
God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. And may God's countenance be lifted up upon us, giving us peace. Amen. Go in peace. Stay for the meeting. Serve God. Love each other. Amen. Stop the recording. No, stop the recording. I don't, don't need that. Yeah. Bye, y'all. Wow. Looks like a mass exodus. Stay! Stay! <laughs> we should have had treats. Dang it. Yeah. Yes. We need a quorum. Stay if you can. Well, thanks for